LA Memorial Coliseum. This is the moment you have all been waiting for. Are you ready to get the bush light clash started? Here to give the command to fire the engines along with carrying the tradition of lighting the torch, please welcome the director of sports for Anheuser-Busch, Cody Back. Drivers, start your engines. Ready to race in downtown Los Angeles. The Bushlight Clash at the Coliseum. 23 drivers at the ready. Who will hoist the trophy up at the Peristyle when it's over? Crazy throughout the season. Wait till you see him on his quarter mile. It's easy to get spun out, but not from the driver behind you. From a driver four or five cars back, the further we go, Mike, it's going to be all take and no give. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks for that, Larry. All right, the all-new Toyota Camry TRD leads the field here in Los Angeles. Let's see if they get the one-to-go sign this time around. It's and a, they do. Such a good point by Larry there. You know, when you get you get taken out or you get hit, it's such a confusing thing. Is is it, is it the guy behind me or like what's the scenario there? The radio communication chatter is so entertaining at this place. Trying to figure out who to pay back. Yeah, and the thing that we hear right now coming to the green is the fact that these guys are all trying to spin those rear tires because you want your car to go into the first corner here and turn because if it goes up the racetrack, they're gonna take full advantage of trying to run into the back of you. 150 green flag laps with a roughly 10 minute halftime break. Denny Hamlin and the inaugural winner here, Joey Logano, lead them to green.
Contact already from the front row. Logano could not turn down in front of Hamlin. Does so in turn one. That opens the door in two. Going to have to try to keep him pinched down there, especially on exit. Talking about Logano staying tough on that outside, slipping and sliding. And this is a battle for track position. Finally got it clear. Yeah, good you, job. You say keep him down on exit, and then he misses the next corner. Now he's got to do it all over again. Hamlin's a little sharper this time. He gets into turn three very well and takes the lead. Pushed it away from him, took it away from him. Here comes Ty Gibbs, his teammate alongside. That's the easiest pass Ty's going to have all night. Well, I think that 54 car is really good, as we've talked about in practice and qualifying. And we see Joey Logano come down in front of the 24. Okay, and he got some help. Smooth and straight. One. That was almost catastrophic there. Had to make a block on William Byron behind him. William had a nose underneath of him and let him go. Alex Bowman got Byron in the bumper, and that hit Logano three cars ahead. Now the conveyor belt forms up. There was a lot of jostling mid and back of the pack as everybody fought for position. And now things are mostly single file. Back yeah. to Tyler Reddick and uh, Bubba Wallace, teammates fighting it out. Looking back from Ross Chastain and all that. Side by side, those two Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin Toyotas. See Ryan Priest on the bottom of Kyle Larson there making a pass. And Ryan Priest, this is right up his alley. Hardcore, short track, beating and banging. He led 43 laps of this race last year that had fuel pump trouble. And you see him enter a little bit high on the entry to the corner to try to get to the center of the corner and drive up off the corner to make that pass. See Byron see starting to get to the rear bumper. Logano there putting some pressure back on Gibbs. Having the affordability to have some clean air Talking about Ty Gibbs, his teammate up there, watch him, learn a little bit there. But you got to keep these guys behind you. Well, it's going to be interesting to see as we go on this long run as to whose car is actually good. We've only had short runs in practice, and you know we're going to run the first 15 or 20 laps here, and everybody's car is going to get better. We've got a few less cars than we had last year, so maybe a little less chaos. But at some point, if this runs green, Denny Hamlin's going to have to deal with the back of this field, who's already three quarters of a lap behind. It's a great point. Only 12, 12 laps in. I'm going to tell you another eight, and he's going to be on the bump for this lap traffic, and the whole game changes. Then it becomes who can get through traffic the best. That's who's going to win this race. Mark Truex up, up five spots, still very deep in the field, uh, back at 14th, but he's probably made the most progress of anybody so far. And I think he's got one of the better cars. I would I would tell you that Martin, I would fall into this category too, is, is not an extremely great qualifier, but he's an extremely great racer, and he is going to get to the front because we have seen how strong these Gibbs cars are. Well, obviously, him winning the race last year, talking about Truex, you know that those guys leading this race, probably, I bet you, will set up a lot like what he ran. So that car is just as good as those, but a lot of cars passed before he can make a name for himself here tonight. We see the Bush Light bumper cam here on Ross Chastain. A little bit of bump and run there with uh, Justin Haley. Regan. Mike, you guys are talking about Martin Truex Jr. Spoke to him right before he got in the race car. Said, what's different from last year to this year? You're not quite as fast. He said, ah, the car's not that bad. It was just really tight in practice. They were trying to adjust to get those front tires to turn. And as you guys mentioned, it's so, so far so good. Up five spots at the start of this race. Look at Martin at work. This track is so small. Look how much wheel he has to turn in that car. He's almost three quarters of the way around. Yeah, the drivers are really busy. And I think when when you talk about Martin and coming through the field, I mean, it's this track is going to develop for you see Ryan Blaney here as we run more and more laps. Is it going to be a tight car or a loose car that you want on the long run as the track rubbers up? Ryan Blaney had to take the provisional spot, did not qualify on time, started last. Humbling old sport we have here with NASCAR wins the championship. Now we're we're looking over in the mirror. Trying to not get lapped. Look at this. Leave. Corey LaJoy to the inside of the number 10, now being driven by Noah Gregson side by side. And Gregson's going to get the worst of that as Briscoe moves through. And here comes Keslowski as well. And that's the worst part. Once you get moved up, especially when you're holding that line up, like I said at the top of the show. There you go, Clint. Now he's going to lose five, six, saw seven. That. Where is he finally going to get in? You saw that left front tire on the 14 car lock up and go right into the side of Corey to the Joy's door. But now Corey's out of the groove, and here they come. 
A little bit of a change in the rules here, change the gearing. Most of these cars, for the most part, aren't downshifting. That's an aid, right? Helps you slow down. That's why you're seeing a lot more wheel lockups this year versus the other two. As these guys race and things start to beat and bang, and you see the left front tire, very common lockup here. But as these guys are racing, this is the back, I don't know, eight, seven, eight cars at the back of the field. But the guy that's right behind them is Denny Hamlin. And I think that's why you're seeing them be so aggressive. It's exactly why you're seeing them aggressive. There's the race leader, Denny Hamlin. Uh, about a third of a straightaway behind this group that has now gone single file of seven cars trying to get away from him. 25 laps in. Boy, that happens fast. I'll tell you what. My goodness. Minor in P's and Q's right now. See Chastain, he ain't willing to ride. He's going to try to get him on the outside. You don't see that very often. Well, you got to make it happen quick because if you get hung up there, you're going to wind up losing some spots. Still down there. Jamie? Our race leader, Denny Hamlin, right now. I talked to his crew chief, Chris Gabehart, earlier, and he said, last year we came here, we felt like we had a car that could win the race. But you know what? That's not good enough. We brought a different setup here, and they are lights out. They've been so happy all day long, and right now they're telling him, adjust your brake bias. Kevin Flint, what exactly are they telling him to do? Well, you can adjust that brake bias. We see left front uh, lock up. What we're going to do? We're going to put some rear brake in it, try to take some of that pressure off the front. Yeah, and you want you want as much rear brake as you can, as tight as the, as the corners are here, um, to help that car turn on the entry to the corner while you're under brake. So it's um, it's a balance. You 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 have that adjustment inside the car to kind of make up for the handling deficiencies that you have. Noah Gregson is the first car to go one lap down. Denny Hamlin leads Ty Gibbs, Joey Logano, William Byron, and Kyle Busch. 30 laps in in Los Angeles. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Bush Light. Race for the mountains. Enjoy responsibly. And by Credit One Bank. 
We are 44 laps into the Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum on FS1. Denny Hamlin's let them all. Ty Gibbs wants the lead as they got in a lot of traffic there. Kevin, we did our first race together, uh, a race hub show, and you picked just Ty Gibbs to win races. And I'm telling you, he is hounding on Denny Hamlin. Well, I know Ty Gibbs uh, fairly well and have got to know him better as, as he came to the Cup Series. That kid works as hard as anybody in the, in the garage. And when you look at this race car, it, it was fast last year. But the thing I like about it right now, Clint, is he can enter a little bit higher and he can turn down so hard in the in the center of the corner and get up off the exit really strong. Maneuverability, yes. that's what it takes to be good, especially when you start getting into this lap traffic. And I think, I agree with you, he is maneuvering better. He rolls the center better, he can get straight drives up off. Oh man, you see the, the brake rotors just blow, girl, <laughs> I'll spit it out, <laughs> glowing bright red on Joey Logano's car. All right, here let's get to the other side. They're double wide in front of them, so Ty Gibbs gets the inside, Gilliland ahead, then LaJoy and Gregson about to go two down, side by side for the lead. Watch this Logano, he's gonna be licking his chops too. Do not let that hold, don't let him in. So there, you in the 10, clear of the 11, 22 of your roll. Danny's not gonna that. be able to get down. Three wide. In trouble. With Gregson in trouble way up Four on the outside. Eight. Logano now gunning on the inside for second. Boy, Logano's brakes are glowing, Kevin. Yeah, and it's mainly just on that right front tire. Kyle Busch looking in. Denny Hamlin's going to have trouble getting to the inside unless he can clear Logano. Logano's trying to stay in there. Almost was able to clear him. Well, you see Joey Logano all the way down on that apron, but he just clear. can't finish. You see a great shot of the rotors glowing on the right front right there. A lot of times they'll split the brake pads with different compounds from left to right. And, and that's that, exactly. that right front tire is working, uh, the right front brake is working really hard. I think that's exactly what you see there. Ty Gibbs is pulling away. Now that's Todd Gilliland, the red car. He is one lap down, the buffer between Gibbs and Hamlin. Well, the cream is rising to the top. You see them all right there on the front stretch. You got Logano behind Hamlin. Kyle Busch right on him, William Byron, and now William's teammate, Kyle Larson. Welcome to the club, here we go. This is the longest green flag stretch we've had in three years of racing at the LA Coliseum. It's a win for fans and a win for football as the USFL and XFL merger is official. The United Football League begins play March 30th with the USFL champion Birmingham Stallions taking on the XFL champion Arlington Renegades. It's this spring on ABC, ESPN, Fox, and FS1. Spring just got stronger with the United Football League. There's an elbow up. Man, Danny's car is just falling off big time, Kevin. Yeah, and he's stuck on the outside there, and you see a lot of beating and banging trying to keep that car up on the outside, but he has definitely fallen off worse than uh, worse than his teammate out in the lead who is absolutely checked out. Byron to the inside of Hamlin now and Bowman trying to follow. They are sixth and seventh. 15 laps to the halfway break, which is sorely needed by some of these cars. How about Ty Gibbs? I mean, driving off from the competition. We saw this at the end of last year. The, the, these guys have done a great job on the 54 car of being around at the races, and, and this car was super fast here last year uh, at this particular race. So this is not a surprise at all to me. You see Kyle Busch making a pass on Joy, uh, Corey the Joy there, the lapper. Don't count him out. Well, and he's a guy that made a lot of ground. He got spun out last year, went to the back of the field, all the way back through the field. So like you say, Clint, this is definitely not a surprise. You see a little bit of a looseness there on the entry to the corner. You see him turn the wheel to the right as he uh, got into turn one down there, turn three. Behind him is Byron, uh, then Bowman. And Hamlin. Haley having a nice race in eighth. Wallace ninth. Chase Elliott rounds out the top 10. Let's have a look at our Xfinity fastest lap so far. After 63 laps, Denny Hamlin. Ty Gibbs, no surprise there. Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch. Good chance. So your winner could come from that top five right there. Well, guys, we're nine laps coming up here from halfway, and that did not take very long. Can I change my pick? <laughs> I told you I thought this 11 car was class of the field. Man, I think we were both wrong. 
might come out of that camp. He's going to be looking for adjustments. Some air pressure, maybe something. Yeah, and right now Brad Keselowski is like, come on, buddy, cut me some, cut me some slack right here. We only have eight laps to go. I want to stay on the lead lap. Ty Gibbs now almost a straightaway ahead of Joey Logano with the rest of the field stacked up behind. Wow, right front is just still glowing red hot. Yeah, and a lot of times we split the brake pads in, in the front of these cars and you see that right front glow to try to keep it from getting loose into the corner under braking. Braking is such a huge part of what we do here at the short track at, at the Coliseum and you see that right front rotor is really working hard but uh, these cars have big brakes on the front of them and they can take a lot of heat and you see no glow on the left front. Well, there's some on Chase Elliott. Uh, Brad Keselowski tried to pinch Ty Gibbs down into turn three but ran him clean and the leader went by so Brad now one lap down and caution waves turn one on the cars around and that is Todd Gilliland. This is way I'm early in a corner. First caution of the race lap 71. His brakes are still going. Yeah, now remember only green flag laps count in this race. And watch the red and black car. Yeah, and the way that he made that comment on the radio, Clint, it sounds like the brakes just brakes went out. And, I, I, you know, a lot of times when the, the brakes get as hot as they are right now, the, the the fluid will start to boil, and then the next thing you know, you don't have any brake pedal. Brake pedal goes to the floor, and it's over. Something's not right there. That thing shouldn't be that hot still. Well, let's check with Larry Mack and our Toyota cutaway car. Well, we're hearing a lot about brakes. You heard Jamie Little talk about Denny Hamlin being told to adjust the brake bias. This is the brake bias knob that the driver can adjust right there. If he cranks a little more front to it, that will help tighten the car up getting in the corner under braking. If it's tight getting in the corner, he can crank some rear. Now, when he's turning that knob, it's turning this cable that's running a balance bar between the front master cylinder and the rear master cylinder. It's two completely different brake systems, and Clinton, Kevin, Trust me, they'll be wearing that brake bias out during this 150 lap race. They'll be wearing it out, but Clint, look how dark it is in there. I know that all looks good in the shop and, and you see that brake bias, or, or was that just me and not being able to see the numbers? Boy, you just set me up. I mean, you <laughs> gave me a softball there. <laughs> them glasses come in handy, don't they there? Yeah, I had to wear them for a few years. <laughs> all right, first caution of the night. Todd Gillen is out of his car. They'll tow it to the infield so we can resume. We listened in on Joey Logano's radio. I'm loose off, but I'm a little tight in the center. I don't know which one I need more of. I need both to compete with those guys. It's curved, but it's got to be like in the center of the corner. If I turn it to one third, I'm loose. So I can't have it there. I need it right here, but then I need drive right here. Yeah, so as a driver, you, you split the corner up into thirds. So he's talking about where you turn off the wall and the entry to the corner. That uh, to the end of the first third, you basically just split the corner up into thirds. But he doesn't need it to be looser at the yeah, end yeah. of that first third. He needs it almost dead center of the corner to just get the car to rotate and get pointed to get up off the corner. Which is a, a tall order for those guys. Yes. That crew chief's Very got hard. Um, a, a difficult situation to do. You make the thing roll better in the center, you're loose in, you're loose off. February 15th on FS1, catch a Fox Sports original. I am Kevin Harvick. I thought he was Kevin Harvick. You're well, Kevin Harvick. It's, it's a documentary taking through a legendary career on and off the track, and it airs 10 p.m. Eastern time, February 15th. I look mean right there, Clint. Well, you were most of your career, Kevin. This is just different. See, Mike, you didn't see this side of him. He's much more happy, much more relaxed up here watching this race. You didn't seem very happy last year when we were here. Well, I, I know when I get done, with this particular uh, show here, I can take these headphones off, sit on the counter, and it didn't matter how fast my car ran today. I felt pretty good. <laughs> you walking. didn't have to throw your I helmet felt, on top of the car. I felt pretty good walking into the garage today. But that's been a that's been a fun uh, documentary to to shoot, and and I think it's got some cool footage in it that the fans are really going to like that nobody's ever seen. So that that's that's been fun to watch. How about the grill on that uh, brand new Toyota Camry TRD? That thing every year they make that thing looks more and more like a cup car every year. That's all brand new from Toyota. Well, I'm sure they're happy that their pace car is being followed by another one of their race cars. And exactly right. That Ty Gibbs machine, that monster energy machine, has just been absolutely bullet fast. And I, I'm not going to say that I, I talked about this you know, a couple months ago or anything, but 
you know, look down this run. Justin Haley in his 51 car running eighth. That is an awesome race for them right out of the box. Yeah, and Justin Haley had had a great run in the uh, Colic car and, and moved over to uh, Rick Ware Racing. And he's just, he's always run good here. William Byron, in the three years we have been at the Coliseum, has never run a single lap out of the top 10. Wow. That's unbelievable. You ever had a track that you ran, never ran outside of the top 10? Or never? I just pretty much covered the gamut, Kevin. I got <laughs> most of it. <laughs> All right, let's listen in on Kyle Larson. How long did it take you to feel like you had good grip in the car, like from an air pressure standpoint? I don't know. I mean, I, I thought we all fired off fairly equal on grip. I think the 41 just did a good job. So, no, I, I didn't feel like at a huge disadvantage or advantage or anything at the beginning. Okay. Now, it was easy to think when this caution come out, this is our break, Kevin. We've got five to go here. It's going to get interesting. You've got to choose to decide who's going to be somebody who moves up on that outside and goes for it. Only four or five laps, that's a good good gamble, right? Well, the choose is going to be a big decision, but you also have to survive because everybody knows that they want every bit of track position that they can get. And, and you know, you get shoved up out of the groove and get spun out. I mean, this is the restarts are the toughest part of racing on this particular track. And it will be five laps because caution laps do not count. Whether it's from this restart or the next one, we will race to lap 75 before the halftime break. It's going to be a good test on Ty Gibbs. Leading this race, um, two's coming. You've got two champions behind you holding off. You, to your point on this restart, elbows up, and you know those guys are going to be pushing hard. So if you're Joey Logano, do you choose the outside or do you pick third? If I'm Logano with only five laps to go, uh, Yes, I'm going to the outside. Well, you I'm ran here last that year. What did you do? Well, I think it, I, it just depends on how your car fires off. It didn't seem like Joey's car fired off very good. It seemed like it took him a little while to get going, and he got shoved up out of the groove. So I think I'd pick third. Okay. Well, he won that outside on the start of the race, Joey Logano. He, he picked that outside line and actually pinched uh, Denny down and was able to get that position. But you see him choose the outside, Kyle Busch right behind him. I like that move by Kyle Busch. Ty Gibbs trying to do what two drivers in NASCAR history have done before him, win the clash before they win their first points race. Jeff Gordon, Denny Hamlin, pretty good company. Get a good jump here, don't overdrive turn one, don't hand them this position. Yeah, and from the driver's standpoint, your responsibility right here is try to get the tires as clean as possible so that you can do everything that you can do to get through turns one and two as clean as possible. So you're going to hear them spin the tires. You're going to see them wiggle the cars back and forth to very aggressively to try to make those tires get as clean as possible. We'll be listening to Tony Hirschman. He is Ty Gibbs' spotter on this restart. Five laps to halfway. Gibbs and Logano, Bush and Larson, Byron and Bowman. Here we go. Exactly right what on, I was yep. talking about. Three mid. Three mid. Top clear. You and the eight. Quick in here, quick in. Get in front of the five, get in, get in. Hamlin shoved it in there, and he almost turned Alex Bowman around in turn three. They're three wide off a of two mid-pack. Logano got a fantastic jump on that start, got in position on him getting in, and that's all it took. He did a great job of just keeping him pinched down, Clint, not letting him get a good line in or off the corner. Boy, rush hour on the 405 was never like this. Single it's been close. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been pretty racy on that thing before. First half dozen, single file. Bubba Wallace and Alex Bowman, the first side-by-side -side battle. That's sixth place. Tyler Reddick right with them. What a difference a restart makes. Look at this, three wide off of four. And there is the caution for halfway. John Hunter Neiman checks around backwards off four. 
Well, that restart was interesting right there, Clint. We saw the 54 take off way late in the restart zone, and I think that really allowed Logano did a great job of timing that restart uh, to get into turn one with just a fender in front of him there. Unfortunately, you saw a little bit of experience pay off there, yep. I think. Oh, wow, Logano, you see, getting in way hot into the door of John Hunter, turns him around. That won't be the last time. Let's go back to the restart. What did Ty Gibbs learn right here? Well, you, you see the restart zone, and the first line that comes up is going to be the beginning of the restart zone. He waits, and he just, the Gano times it perfectly and rolls him a half a car and then pinches him down, gets on that left front fender, and doesn't allow him to use the racetrack and, and do what he needs to do to, to run his normal line well, and gets uh, gets the lead. Him getting that upper hand on him off the jump forced him to overdrive the Absolutely. corner in the inside. Now all of a sudden you got Kyle Busch on the inside of you as well. You leave the corner three wide. Rest is history. All right, NASCAR informs us that the caution came out working lap 75, <laughs> which means that our lap counter is incorrect. We have one lap to go to halfway. All right, well. Oh, no. The restarts here are intense, and when these guys know they only have to go one lap, so it'll change the rule. It'll change the choose. Where's Kyle Busch choosing? Well, based on what just happened, <laughs> it looks like, you know, if he can time it like Logano did, it looks like he needs to choose on the outside because you only have to go one lap. So if you choose on the bottom and those guys just run down the back straightaway, uh, you could you could lose some track position. If you, you, know, you know what, though? Eight wheels corner better than four. I know. So I want to be on the inside. That's the hardest part about making that decision to go on the outside. Exactly what you just said. All he has to do is go in there, door you a little bit, move you up the racetrack, and now all of a sudden you go from second to maybe fifth or sixth in one corner. Well, you also have the other, other strategy, too. Am I going to restart third and just give that leader a shove up the racetrack to try to get underneath him? So he's got, he's got some decisions to make. I like your strategy for a longer run, but for one lap? One lap. Boy, I'd hate to give up the bottom. Yeah, but there's 75 more you got to survive after this. Don't forget that. Don't make this guy mad yet. Todd Gilliland, uh, Gilliland yes. checked and released at the care center. AM there's all your crew chiefs. Crew. Sorry, there's all your crew yep. chiefs up. It's pretty weird to see crew chiefs in the grandstands watching their cars go around. Not on that pit box. All right, decision time. That's how he goes to the outside. Here's the choose. I, he, you know, the inside worked so well for him on the last restart. You're saying Logano's going to the outside? No, no, no. No, oh, no I thought you said Kyle. Okay. No, I Kyle got you. Bush. Let's find out. Looking high. To your point, though, Kevin, I mean, you've got the opportunity. you got one lap. Yeah, like I look William Byron's, you know, the, the five card chose the bottom right there, and William Byron chose the outside. I view that as just going to be a position gain because you only have to go one lap. You also have to have a little trust in that guy on the inside of you. He's got to do you right here. I'm wondering if Ty Gibbs can do what was done to him on the last restart and dive underneath Logano and snatch the lead back. As we saw last year, the, the restarts are what make or break this race, and, and you have to be able to survive these restarts and, and not get spun out. And, and that is difficult to do, especially when it starts to get physical like it's getting ready to be. You see how hard they're scrubbing those tires, spinning the rears, trying to get some temperature in these things, keep them cleaned off like you talked about. So important to get a good jump, and more importantly, having that thing turn left when it gets down to the end of the straightaway. Where I wouldn't want to be is the third or fourth row here because you're going you're gonna to run into somebody and you're going to get hit from behind. All right, restart this time. One lap to halfway, NASCAR says. Logano and Bush, Gibbs and Larson, Byron and Hamlin. Here we go. You see Joey moving him up the racetrack. Kyle Busch did a good job getting a run. How about Kyle Larson coming on the inside? This is going to be big. Three wide for second. Logano the leader, Larson second, Gibbs third. Byron and Kyle Busch ends up fifth. Still in a green here. There's a the caution. Boy, that was a big turn of events for Kyle Larson. Good decision there. Kyle Busch is probably second guessing that outside. It would have worked again. You got to trust that guy on the inside. As soon as Joey moved him up the racetrack, the rest is history. Opened the door up for all these guys coming in, and he was three wide. So halfway in the Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum, we will take a break with Joey Logano leading. Larson and Ty Gibbs on FS1. 
halfway in the Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum. Teams making adjustments during the halftime break. Let's have a look at tonight's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Clint, who you got an eye on? Well, they let me go first. He started eighth, guys. He's already running second. Had a big restart right there at the end of this thing. Starting off second, Kyle Larson in the five car. I think he's the guy. You got to watch out when he picks first. I, I'm glad he picked first because I think my pick's better. I, I like Ty Gibbs in the 54 car just because he dominated the middle part of that run. And I think he learned a little bit of a lesson there on the restart with Joey Logano. But I think overall he's got the fastest car. And in the end, I want the fastest car. He's going the wrong way, Kevin. No, he's not. Now he's going to go forward. I got it. Can't believe you guys both laid down on Joey Logano. Uh, he is a up front. Oh, by the way, the leader? Yeah, <laughs> oh, by the way. Uh, Martin Truex has passed eight cars in this race so far from starting mid deep in the field. And starting from the back, Ryan Blaney has also made up eight spots. They're the two leaders in that category, but uh, Truex had a tougher road to go, so I want to keep an eye on him. Oh, for sure, and you know this choose cone. We've already seen it come into play a couple times already, and as this race progresses, now the gloves come off. Now it's go time. You're out of options. They're going to start pushing and shoving. Well, we saw it on those on that last restart there. We, we saw the five car, we saw the 54 car not get a good jump on the restart we saw the five car just lay on his bumper and push him up the racetrack and I think that's going to get much much more aggressive as as we go through the laps we'll take it through it there Kevin you, what, well, exactly what you're talking about they're going to come to the restart box and you know I think right here you're going to see the 54 not take off very well and the five is pushing 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 he goes down in the corner continues pushing him right here pushes him up the racetrack takes him three wide and goes from fifth to second and and he's not very happy about that either. Nope. No, and that's that's with with Ty Gibbs. They got to keep him calm and remind him that he has the fastest car. Kyle Busch and his team talking about the clouds to the west. Those clouds have a name, Mike. Off on the radar and it's getting closer to kind of popping up a little bit around us everywhere. Aren't you posted? Well, there it is, Kevin. We were talking about that under break. I mean, you see the weather moving in. It is imminent, and that's the problem. You don't know what the last lap's going to be. The race is official. We're halfway, so if that weather starts coming, there's a good chance if you're in the lead, it's yours. Now, this is my favorite kind of short track Saturday night where any lap could be the last lap. Well, it definitely raises that urgency up and, and allows the drivers to understand that the, the crew chiefs are making sure the drivers understand, hey, this could be the last lap. You need to get everything you can, every corner, every lap, and it's all going to start right here on this first restart. Who out of this group of front runners do we think has not really shown their cards yet? Well, you've definitely... Larson's just gotten an opportunity to, right? The guy I picked, but look right behind him, his teammate, William Byron. And then you've got Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch has been in this thing the whole time. He's been solid here both times he's been here. Do not count Kyle Busch out when he's on the racetrack. We all know that. Last year's event here was quite a shoving match. And Kevin, I don't want to say you hit everything but the lottery. Pretty close. Well, I tried to hit the lottery on the way home, <laughs> but I did. I did hit. I did hit several cars, and I think as uh, as the race went on, really what we didn't have here to start the race today were the heat races. My frustration started in the heat race, but in the first half of this race, now we have some frustrated drivers. We've seen some beating and banging, and now we're going to see some some frustration. Go ahead, Clem. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it started. That's in the heat race. Yeah. I, he should have known better. I, he should have called me. I would have yeah. warned him because that looked like a retaliation. It was. Kevin. Okay. But I don't think we're done there. Oh. Here comes Gilliland. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. But how come you always retaliate with interest? Like, yeah. they didn't wreck you. I knew I didn't have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was Oh, the... is this again? <laughs> I mean, was that three times, Kevin? <laughs> Oh, Denny's mad at you there. I it was it was rough, Clint. <laughs> it was rough. And uh, all right, tell you what. Speaking of rough, it's go time. Green flag. Kyle Larson gave up second spot to take the inside. It's Ty Gibbs on the outside. Logano throws him a shot, and Larson has the inside. Headed for three. Logano shuts him down. Just a uh oh. It's exactly what we were talking about. Larson got him a bump the first time, and then Kyle Busch laid on Larson's bumper. I cannot believe. Turn two, car stop, Chase Elliott. We're still green. 
So, oh, red no, down here in four. Because in turn four, four of them stack up, led by Bubba Wallace, Ross Chastain, Michael McDowell, and Corey LaJoy. You knew it was coming. All hell has broke loose. Well, you saw the, the multi-car pushing and shoving. Usually the guys in the front are getting pushed from four cars back, and, and that's just the aggression level that we talked about that's getting ready to happen. Keep an eye on uh, Bubba Wallace in this one. The 23 on the outside. Oh, oh. got a shot from his teammate. Tyler no, Riddick. Bowman the, got the, under the 48 him. 48 got into the back of the 45, and the 45 got into the 23. Yeah, you see Bowman move over, did a crossover to get in line, fill that hole, got into the back of Reddick, and then <laughs> he's I'm going to bet you. I'm going to bet you the way that the, the 48 moved over like that, I'm going to bet that the 48 got shoved out of the way by the 45. The hardest part in all of this is to figure out who to retaliate on. Yeah, you don't have any idea. I mean, he's mad at his teammate because that's who hit him, but that's not the whole story. Yeah. There is a Paul Harvey. <laughs> Chase Elliott with the hood up. Well, and it looks like, is that, are those wall scrapes on the inside there? Now, here's why he stopped in turn two. Full half to it, Chase. Something is broke, steering left front. You're right. He hit the inside wall. Yeah, you, and, you and see the, the you see the scrapes on the on the fender right there under the Goodyear decal. Um, that's from the inside wall, and, and it broke the it broke the front suspension. Where's he at, Clint? That squeezed down right there. Well, I'd have to go back, and I, he obviously didn't hit the inside wall, but yeah. maybe somebody hit him. He was the third car on the outside. But that story may have started back in three and four. I don't think we may have been back far enough. Contact with that left front, what broke something, a frame something in there. Yeah, and as tough as these cars are, the suspension pieces, the the tow links in the back, and and everything that that is in the front. If you clip these things just right, it'll snap the suspension like that. So I have six cars involved in this caution. Alex Bowman got into Tyler Reddick. He got into Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace spun, and going around with him were Ross Chastain, Michael McDowell, and Corey LaJoy. And the best thing that I hear about that, Clint, is I'm not involved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, the craziest part is the caution was in two. <laughs> well, but we look up, and there's a mess over here off of four wrecked. And that really was the caution because Chase Elliott got going to come around and try to get into the pits. Anyway, it's a caution. Caution laps don't count. The Everybody is sorted out with the exception of Chase Elliott. The retaliation list is building. I would have to agree with you, sir. <laughs> so again, we have Logano with Ty Gibbs on the outside. And Kyle Larson in the stealing spot, position three. I'll tell you who got back up there and did a good job on this restart is Denny Hamlin. Hamlin will restart fourth. Kyle Busch fifth. William Byron sixth. Uh, Reddick, who was not involved. He was involved in the caution. He wasn't part of the caution. So he keeps his spot. He is seventh. And Truex is up for eighth. How about that? Here we go. Ty Gibbs got a great start on the outside. Reddick, a huge dive bomb on the inside. They're not going to be happy about that. I'm Spinner, talking. turn two. He's going to have to get that back. Kyle Oof. Busch is not going to be happy with that move. That was a pretty bold move, Kevin. So that'll be Ross Later Chastain going around and uh, Corey LaJoy collateral damage in that one. Cautions breed cautions, especially here. Rack them up, we'll do it again. Look how hard they've been in the back bumper of Chastain. This is from uh, Ross Chastain. Two oh, inside there, two inside. Yes, yeah, obviously run over from behind. Didn't see who it was, but. From the inside, yeah. It looked like uh, McDowell was on the inside of Stenhouse, had him up the track three wide on the outside, never works here. Yeah, well, Michael McDowell's. Oh, look uh, at this payback. Yeah, you see Stenhouse isn't happy because Michael McDowell has a huge dive bomb uh, going into the corner. and These two have a history. Stenhouse and McDowell. 
And restart violation for Tyler Reddick. He will go to the rear. Kevin, did he go out of line before the start finish line? I did not see it, Clint. I, he was I, way to the inside, be, uh, and it has to be what the call was. Got to be the only call. He was way to the inside early. I knew he was looking. Let's see here. Well, let's watch him on this restart. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, and the rule is you're not supposed to pull out of line. Whether you're beside the guy or not doesn't really matter. If you pull out of that line before you get to the start finish line, that's a penalty. And that's a big penalty for him. That cost him. He was in position. He's going to have to jump more than he thought he more cars than he thought he was, Clint. He's going to have to take care of it. So get restart. Uh, Reddick will go from seventh to 19th on this next restart. Jamie. Well, you guys mentioned Ricky Stenhouse Jr. having a little battle back there and getting bumped into. He's a little frustrated back in 15th right now. During that break, I looked over. He had gotten out of his race car and was in the window of John Hunter Nemechek pointing at him, frustrated at him. You're not supposed to get out of your race car during the break, so he's already hot under that helmet, and you see it continues here. And Nemechek's having a tough night. Two laps down. Noah Gregson is three down. Todd Gilliland and Chase Elliott out of the race. 19 cars on the lead lap. So the choose takes me back to the choose. Kyle Larson didn't take that outside line on the last restarts. Chose to go to the inside. Now he's back at traffic. I, the decision here is very important on these, these chooses. Well, let's go back one caution to where Alex Bowman got into Tyler Reddick, who got into Bubba Wallace, who spun. Here's Bubba. Well, tell your buddies up there. I'm in mode, but I ain't got no buddies up here. Good, me either. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the right attitude to have, though. He and his spotter, Freddie Kraft, and his crew chief, Booty Barker, they, they're a comedy show, in fact. I think Booty is the breakout star of this Netflix series, Full Speed, uh, documenting the playoffs of 2023. Well, you knew somebody was going to break out, right? There's going to be a character, and you don't have to look any further than Booty. He's an awesome guy, so much fun to be around. Builds a hell of a fast race car. Just chill too, right, Kevin? He he doesn't get wound up about much. And you know, I I, I love the advice though. When when you talked about nobody got wound up, it's just like, hey, we don't we don't have any friends, so go do what you have to do. And that's really how it evolves here. You get you get run into, you get spun out, and, and then you have to just be the bulldozer. You know, we were talking about this yesterday. Isn't this a strange sport where your teammates aren't really your teammates. They're the guys you most want to beat or most need to beat. And after all, you two were teammates twice at Richard Childress and at Stuart Haas. Well, it's not supposed to be that way, Mike, but it just is. Yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. The biggest day in racing has gotten bigger. The Grand Marshal, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, will kick off the Daytona 500 February 18th and only on Fox. But first, we have to settle the Bushlight Clash at the Coliseum. And now they're lined up double file. Ty Gibbs, Joey Logano, Denny Hamlin, William Byron, Kyle Larson, Kyle Bush, Alex Bowman, Martin Truex. Let's see if your guy learned a little bit here. Same scenario. Green flag. Much better job, Kevin. Yeah, that's that's really what you want to do, you got to get half that car in front of him. So he did a great job. See Joe Logano get clear and Denny Hamlin lock up the left front tire, shove him up Whoa. the racetrack. Big bumper tag and up goes Hamlin three wide behind him with Priest, Bush and. And look at uh, Truex. Truex is there for the take and followed suit right with Kyle Larson on that inside, taking advantage of those people getting moved up the racetrack. That's what it's all about. Unbelievable. Over the eight. Mark Truex started 19th. He was 11th at the halfway, and here he is in fourth place. From the trunk. Fantastic. And earlier today, we, we thought he might not even qualify. Oh, we see a lot of tire smoke, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and we knew that the Joe Gibbs cars were good, and we knew that Martin just had a little little flub up there in, in qualifying, but he has driven straight to the front of the pack, had a couple of fortunate good restarts, and Larson underneath the 22. He might be able to get a two for one here. Get these guys. Larson gets into Logano and shoots him up the racetrack. I'm going to give them both. Well, Joey Logano is he is just so good with his race car, and when he needs to go into defense and get shoved out of the way or get beat on, he knows how to put his car in the right spot and, and protect himself. And that's exactly what I see happening. He's protecting the line. Priest underneath Hamlin. This is for fifth place. First side by side battle right there going off into turn one. How long will he wait? Talking about Kyle Larson. Will he move him, Kevin? Well, he's going to have to, and, and Joey Logano is one of the most difficult passes that you can make in this sport. And, it's, and right now, he's just doing a good job, like we talked about on defense. It seems like it takes his car a little bit to get going, but we see Ryan Priest underneath Denny Hamlin can't quite finish that pass. Priest early in the day in practice had great drive off the corner, not so much now. Hamlin is the measure of him. Priest gets loose in two, and Hamlin can't clear him. Well, it's just so hard down there on an apron when you come back across that apron on the transition to get forward drive because it jerks the car sideways and see Ryan lose that spot back to Denny Hamlin. Back to single file. Ty Gibbs trying to give this field the goodbye look with four past champions chasing him. Well, this is what we talked about earlier. We knew that Ty Gibbs had the fastest race car. He did a good job on the restart and he has checked out. But we talked about the 22 car not being the fastest car, and you see that gap opened up, and he's got this whole line of cars behind him. Yeah, I mean, that's the best case scenario for Ty Gibbs looking in that mirror and seeing Logano hold this group up. But if you're Ty Gibbs, just make some laps. Do not abuse those tires. Be easy on your brakes. Save some car for the end of this race because you know more than likely there's going to be another caution. Well, it's inevitable that he's going to catch the back of the field that as fast as he is. I mean, he's on the same straightaway as Noah Gregson in, in the last running position on the racetrack. Ryan Blaney has moved up to ninth, passing uh, Alex Bowman. No matter. Pretty much single file here. See our champ, defending champion Ryan Blaney there. He's driven away from Bowman, and he's about to catch that pack of second ninth or eighth, eighth place right I'd say Ty gives about four five laps from catching this lap traffic and that's when things are going to get interesting as good as his car cl turns Clint you know in the, in the middle of the corner we, we had his in car up and, and it just looks so easy compared to most in there he's smooth and can turn right at the center of the corner and drive straight up off the corner the other thing I love about his scenario is he's got such a good lead a good pad that he can afford a little bit of time with some of these leaders. Now, obviously, you need to get around those lap cars and not let those guys catch you. But if you can keep putting cars in between you, it makes it even that much easier. 55 green flag laps to go in the Bush Clash at the Coliseum. We're going to take your box side by side.
43 laps to go in the Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum on FS1. Ty Gibbs is your leader. Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, but Denny Hamlin coming back toward the front. He is fourth. Martin Truex is fifth, and Ryan Blaney has climbed to seventh. Yeah, and this 54 car is just so fast. Um, the longer they run, the, the better it seems that he runs, and he's just so smooth. Regan? Well, Kevin, you guys just mentioned Ryan Blaney climbed at seven. He told his team at the break a little while ago that his car continued to get better the longer they ran. The more that he got heat into the tires, the better his car gripped. So if we continue to have this long run right here, long ways to go to get back to first, but certainly looking good to have a really good run out of this. Yeah, and Ryan Blaney has that, he must have the same brake system that Joey Logano has in there with that rotor glowing on the right front. So they've They've got those brake pad pads split in the front of that car as well. Never thought we'd see a 2.7 second lead at this little bull ring, guys. Well, now leader Ty Gibbs is getting into traffic. He's going to put uh, Noah Gregson another lap down. Look at those rotors, Clint. You can almost see right through that thing. That's hot. And, and the reason that we split those rotors is to keep the car from getting loose into the corner under braking. Blaney up to sixth, passing Kyle Larson. Yeah, it really aids that car from wanting to turn in automatically. Kind of pulls that thing back to the right, keeps it from getting loose. You could feel it too. That's what's oh, yeah. impressive about that. When they start splitting pads and doing that stuff, it's impressive. Traffic ahead for the leader, John Hunter Nemechek, then Michael McDowell, then Tyler Reddick, and Ricky Stenhouse, who are tattooing each other's bumpers. Okay, what does that mean? That's that's a good point. Splitting the pads, Kevin. What what are they doing there? Yeah, you have two different compounds in in the front brakes, so you'll you'll put a, a different aggression in the right front than you would in the left front to help keep that car stabilized under braking when it wants to be loose getting in the corner, which is typically what we fight at these types of racetracks under braking, especially the longer that you go here. It always wants to slide the back of the back of the car on the entry to the corner. So you split those pads. Wow, a lot of urgency back here as the leader is coming on this pack of cars. And his lead is shrinking. All these cars in front of him, they're trying, they're pushing, they're hard. Be careful, make sure one of these guys don't turn a car around in front of you, lands right in your lap, in right, your ninth. Right behind those five is the leader. He has to get through McDowell, then Stenhouse, Reddick, Chastain, all of whom have been playing bumper tag here. And you see them all starting to protect, protecting that bottom. Doesn't give him an avenue to make a pass. McDowell right in front of him has really started to see him protect getting into the corner on the inside. Gonna have to move him, Kevin. Well, you see the you see the left front tire lock up and, and now we see Joey Logano, but you see the 54 car lock up the tire. Now he's got him up the racetrack. Michael McDowell up the racetrack and he's underneath him and putting another one down. And eventually Joey Logano is going to have to go through this same traffic, but he won't have as much trouble. He finally laid the bumper to him. He was nice about it gingerly, but nonetheless, it was effective and went on. It's a good pass. 28 laps to go. Ty gives in command with almost a two second lead over Joey Logano, but more importantly, three lap cars separating the two leaders. Denny Hamlin third, alone on the racetrack. Kyle Busch, one choice. In one and two, he enters tight on the wall. Three and four, he's a little higher, still by half. Chase Briscoe, he, uh, he was the last car in the field and seeing him make up some good spots. I liked what I heard right there, that spotter. He's telling him what he's doing behind him. You don't have to, you can focus on driving your race car. You don't have to look in that mirror. Every time you look in that mirror, it slows you down. Ty Gibbs under Stenhouse, trying to put uh, the Daytona 500 champion a lap down. They're your biggest movers since the restart as Gibbs clears Stenhouse. And you see Bubba Wallace just moved the 14 car up the racetrack. Logano's really shrunk in. He's cut into this lead again. Shrunk that gap up. Was able to get around McDowell. Now just one lapped car separate the two leaders. Well, it looked like Logano's car. Just it takes 10 or 12 laps to get going, but it looks like as we run here, his fall off is not as much as as Ty Gibbs. This is Chastain in front of uh, leader Ty Gibbs. Let's see. It's 22 Chastain. to go. 
Chastain will be a, a difficult one to, to put a lap down as well. Well, and look at the difference under braking. I mean, the, the, the 54 car is just so superior. The Gibbs cars in general are so good in that brake zone, and that's what Ross is fighting. It looks like under braking, he's got a condition that he's having a tough time dealing with. Timing that, it's all timing. Make sure you time it to catch him and make that pass in his weak spot. Now in, right in front of them. Right with you. Brad Keselowski side by side with Ryan Priest. This is going to get to be a jumble here this as they catch those two. Not at all what you want to see when you're trying to lap cars is them door to door. It makes it very difficult. There's nowhere to go. Logano has gone past Denhouse. Logano is now closing on the leader who is bottled up in traffic. Yeah, exactly what I was saying. Worst case scenario. Ty Gibbs has no option. There's there's nowhere to go. And he's he just seems to put the bumper <laughs> to Ross Chastain right there because he knows he has to go. Now look at Chastain repaying a favor. He was and able to get away from him. Logano trying the inside. Priest gives him the lane. That's a scenario where you got to do what you got to do, right, Kevin? It, it, that was the right thing to do. If you're going to win this race, you're going to have to be aggressive. Yeah, and you see how much easier it is for Joey Logano to go by these guys. Once the leader goes by, everybody's kind of like giving up, and, and you see Ross just move up the racetrack for Joey Logano. So 13 cars are now on the lead lap with 15 laps to go. Ty Gibbs trying to close on Brad Keselowski. Justin Haley off pace. Has trouble, yeah. 51 of Justin Haley's definitely off the pace. Could there be a caution? And Logano now has a clear shot at the leader, although he's about five, six car lengths back. I don't know if he's going to get it to the pits, guys. Sharp turn. It's going to be tight. He's going to have to start turning quick. Going to make it. Right All there. right. We stay green. No, he, he's off the racetrack. I think it's protected right there. All right, got it. He just had to do a quick three-point yeah, turnabout. Yeah. 12 laps to go. Joey Logano trails Ty Gibbs by between five and seven car lengths, depending on where they are on the racetrack. Can he catch him? He, he was about a half a tenth faster the last lap, so. He is giving it everything he's got. Almost a tenth on that particular lap, faster than the leader. The problem is there's not very many lappers to slow Ty Gibbs down. Oh, turn. Uh, McDowell's around backwards in three and four. Here comes the caution. 10 to go, that is not what Ty Gibbs wanted to see, Kevin. No, and here we go again, right? With these restarts, you're, you're gonna have to defend and these guys are gonna be super aggressive in the pushing and the shoving. And, and it's not gonna come from that guy beside no, you or behind him. It's, it's gonna not. come from two or three rows back. You all right? Let's see what happens here. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it's hard to tell what happened. I couldn't tell if he came up or the one came down. It was a little bit difficult to tell exactly. It looked to me like he he did. Oh, he's coming up. Yeah, he was coming up. Almost looks like McDowell does not slow for the corner. Well, I, I think he was upset with Chastain. Yeah, he tried to squeeze him, it looked like, maybe. Well, we'll pour out another one. Well, he lost. Yeah, didn't work out either way. Oh, Actually, Ross Chastain got, the got the wall. Yeah. One car got in the wall, bounced off the wall, and came down and hit the 34. That's exactly right. I'm learning quickly not to speculate, Clint. <laughs> well, I did, and I messed up. I got it wrong. You can see that was that was a good snapshot of those rear clips, right? When they softened that rear clip up, you saw how much it gave there. Two years ago, that wouldn't have been the case. Well, I can I can tell you. From, from a driver's standpoint, backing into the wall like that, no matter what they did with the rear clip, is a really hard shot. And, and usually here, it's the hardest shot that you can take uh, anywhere onto the schedule.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank. 10 laps to go and Joey Logano has a tough decision to make. Does he start outside Ty Gibbs or does he go to the inside second row? You got to choose now. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't I, I don't know. He's aggressive underneath you. I know that, right? It could be hard to say. I don't think he knows yet. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love it. You know, I think as you as you listen to that radio conversation, that's just the driver knowing that it's going to get rough. He, but he knows if he gets a good restart and he can get that half a car like he got earlier, that he can keep him pinched down. So if he takes the outside, can he beat Ty Gibbs into and off the corner? If he gets a good launch, but if he doesn't, he's in trouble. Well, All I right. think we're going to see it right here. Pay attention. I think it's choose this time by. He takes the outside. I like it. Oh. Work once. Ryan Blaney moves up to restart fourth. What a comeback. And Bubba Wallace right behind him. Provisional. Took a provisional yeah. to get in this thing. Now he's in the money. I think one other thing that, that I see that I like if I'm Ty Gibbs on this restart is Denny Hamlin Team behind, behind me. me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know that Denny's still going to be aggressive, but he's not going to be as aggressive if it was Joey Logano in front of him. 12 cars on the lead lap. Gibbs and Logano, the front row. Hamlin and Ryan Blaney, row two. Kyle Busch and Bubba Wallace in the third row. Kyle Larson with teammate William Byron, row four. Martin Truex, Chase Briscoe, row five. Alex Bowman and Brad Keselowski. Those are the lead lap cars. So Ty Gibbs took off uh, way late last time. I think an early start would benefit him. That's exactly what you saw. Oh, good jump. Oh, he's moving him up. Here comes Danny on the inside. Exactly what we thought. Logano way out to lunch, three wide. Joey got used up and goes all the way back to sixth place. Ty Gibbs is trying hard to get back down. Fills that hole. Man, yeah, Denny is really having trouble with the left front lockup. Hamlet, see it Gibbs, two laps Bush, in a row. Blaney, Larson. I think Gibbs can still get the job done here. Be patient. You're going to go up there. Your car is faster than him. Take care of it. Blaney to the inside for third. Couldn't do it. Off two. Denny is really having trouble getting his car slowed down. Yeah. Oh, he's put the bumper to him. Cost him his drive off. Watch how difficult to see the, another left front lockup. Once it starts, it's really hard. That tire will find that flat spot, Kevin. Every time it finds that flat spot and it continues just to smoke. And now you see the 54 car smoke the, the left front tire, but. Don't overcharge your entry to one. It's all on the rapid exit. Coming five to go. You heard it, five to go, folks. Will he do what it takes? Well, if he doesn't, the guys behind him will. Yep. I think he has the better car. Be patient. Denny's going to have trouble keeping this car underneath of him. If he slides up one more time to be there for the taking, you just oh, go, oh, no, now he slid up. It's Gibbs right. overdrove the corner. Here it's comes right. Kyle Busch. Busch is into him. They almost lock up, and now they're side by side per second. Kyle sliding up. He's loose in. And that is exactly what Denny Hamlin wants to see, is those guys fight like crazy behind him to get the biggest gap possible. Blaney wanted a piece. He's to the inside for third. Joey Logano coming back, looking for fourth here. Two to go. What a comeback for Ryan Blaney. Running third. Gibbs in fifth. Hamlin looking at the white flag. One lap to go. Sponsored white by Credit One white Bank. Crash in turn off. four. It's Gibbs. Oh, no. Man. Well, you know what that means. Oh, we get another time. restart. That's what I love about this event. Any other race, this baby's over. Not here. Oh, what a heartbreaker. Feel yeah. bad for him. It just came, you know, he just shot in there a little bit too hard. And it's so hard on these used tires when you slid the tire and everything just keeps finding that flat spot. Just makes it tough to try to, to get, get in the down. corner hard.
Well, see, he obviously got turned around by Kyle Larson, but did you see Bubba Wallace? It, that energy came from farther back than the one that turned him around. Side pull, bottom of coverage for energy, get three tops. Two tops. Two at the eight. Two at the 12. Two at the 22. And two off to Larson right now. Clear by 22 if you need it. Clear low. Side five. Clear low, clear low, get in. Come into white. Early on, Ty Gibbs had the fastest car. There's the Monster Energy Cam. And we're going to green, white, checker. All right, Kevin, walk me through this. We see Denny Hamlin cannot keep this car under him getting into the corner. Keeps locking that left front up. I know that. Kyle Busch has seen that. Kyle Busch is a champion of this sport. I'm probably not going to pick on that outside of that car. Well, I, I, I think you, you have to be nervous if you're Denny Hamlin because of the way that left front tire is sliding. You know he's going up the racetrack. So third place might be the place to be right now. I really think it's going to be the right choice. Move there on the inside, let him make a mistake, slide up the racetrack and take that inside line. How's the view from up here? The view is great because I know when I leave, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm going to take this headset off and nobody's going to be mad at me. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, the opposite. I want to be in that eight car right now. I like my chances. I think you're right. Yeah. Now starting now on FS2 is Big East basketball. Xavier at DePaul. And that game will finish here on FS1 right after the conclusion of the Bushlight Clash. I'm not driving and I'm nervous. Is this normal? Yes, it happens all the time. See Ryan Priest getting a free pass. And Question we'll restart is with 13 cars on the lead lap. If Kyle doesn't take that outside, Kyle Bush, if he doesn't take that outside, you know, somebody's going to. Will it be Blaney or will it be Logano? Have, have we seen anyone restart second and get into turn three with the lead tonight? Not not since early in the race. Joey Logano, Joey Logano. took the lead from the 54 car earlier, but um, we know that that 11 car is going up the racetrack. So it's, yeah. it's, it's a matter of how far he goes up the racetrack and, and what happens after that? Rolls first, all right, you're, so you're Denny Hamlin. You know that you, you're having trouble. That's your weak spot, so you got to back up the corner. You cannot overdrive that corner because that thing is going to lock up. And sometimes that makes it worse, Clint, because you just don't get in there and load that tire up. It's a really a fine line. Well, and also gives them an opportunity yeah. to run you over. Yeah. Hey, how about Ryan Blaney? You know, I think the last four cars that he's passed have been on the choose. Yeah, but I think the more interesting part about that is where Kyle, Kyle Busch chose. Yeah because of the fact that somebody has obviously told him that the 11 car is having problems getting in the corner and he knows they've told him that car is going up the racetrack. I told him, Kevin. I you told, told him. him. Great yes. job. Well, good job. That's what's going to happen. I, boy, I love this right here. This is going to get good. All right, we've got Hamlin and Blaney on the front row, something I never would have predicted at the start of this race. With Hamlin, the fastest qualifier, and Blaney having to take a provisional. Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, Row two, Joey Logano and Martin Truex, the former winners here in row three. Bubba Wallace, William Byron, row four, Alex Bowman, and Chase Briscoe, the top ten. You also have Keslowski and Priest on the lead lap. Let's settle this green-white checker. Monster jump. That's one way you don't have to worry about locking that left front up. That was a fantastic jump by Denny Hamlin. A great lock up. Lots of lock up, but it just doesn't seem to affect the car as much as you would think it as much. White it should go up the racetrack. Four, White flag. Larson trying to hold off Bubba Wallace. They slam together in turn one, and Hamlin is all by himself in turn number three. Off turn four, spinner oh, yeah, turn boys. four, but the checkered flag is waived. All right, my Did man. Good, good work. Good job, everybody. Way to start it off. It all started on that corner. Lunch. And in the wall in turn two is where Ross Chastain sends Tyler Reddick. Wow. After the flag. That was uh, intense. 
Great job managing that restart. He was at a deficit with that left front wheel lock up. He was having trouble with it. Got a good jump. This is exactly Makes what he you needed look to good. do. Good, he, good pick, bud. I honestly thought Kyle Busch was going to win that race because of it. Joe Gibbs Racing has now won four of the last five clashes. The last three here in Los Angeles, previously at Daytona. For Hamlin, it's his fourth clash victory, second most all time behind Dale Earnhardt. Hamlin takes a lot of grief from really everybody and <laughs> I, I, I mean honestly and, and he just he compartmentalizes everything to be able to get in that race car and perform every single time and um, you know I think, I think it's impressive. I think Artie's right he's creating the you know our vortex theory I think he's creating the vortex the rain stayed away we get the bush like clash at the Coliseum in and Denny Hamlin delivers. He did a great job. That was that was impressive. Look at that tire blew it out. Jamie Little. And Denny Hamlin, we're just in a smoke show down here. That was impressive. Denny, you were so confident in this car. You got the pole earlier, but then you slipped back a little bit. How did you fight your way back and take the lead with 10 laps to go and then hold off your teammate and pass him? Yeah, a lot of it was just what happened in front of me, right, with the 54 and 22, and you just never know what was going to happen there, but I got a really good run off of uh, off of turn two and just got position and was able to hang on from there. So. It's so chaotic, the restarts with everyone's just bumping and banging, but it uh, feels great to win here in L.A. Danny, I know you had shoulder surgery in the off season, so there's question marks coming in. Then you get the big win to kick the season off. What does this mean to you and the team and just starting the year this way? Uh, it's just a you know great momentum boost. It doesn't much more do much more than that, but uh, you know, I clean off all the trophies uh, every January 1st in the entryway of the house, and now we get to add one pretty quick. So really happy about that. Congratulations. Denny Hamlin is your clash winner. He has something to say, I think. You know I beat your favorite driver again, right? <laughs> well, Kyle Busch, always so good at the clash. Second a couple years ago. Third last year, second again this year. I know it's got to sting a little bit to not get that win, but a great night for you. Yeah, I know it definitely does sting. Um, I felt like the first half we were better. Had a better car, we were better than the 11, but um, you know some of the adjustments we made weren't as good. Some of the adjustments they made were were better. So um, you know, all in all, just um, glad to have a good night. Glad to come out here in one piece, even with all the bumping and banging and everything else that happens. But uh, thanks to Morgan and Morgan for being with us here today. It was uh, fun to have them on board. I know everybody was chuckling on our paint scheme. So uh, good times with those guys, and of course, uh, thanks to Lucas Oil Zone, um, Cheddar's, everybody, FICO, all the guys uh, back at the shop, ECR engines. So. We got a little bit of work on the short track program. Clash seems okay, but uh, you know we'll try to figure out the rest of the year. See you at Daytona, Kyle. Thanks. Thanks, Regan. Denny Hamlin wins the Clash. Kyle Busch, Ryan Blaney, from last to first. <laughs> Joey Logano fourth, and Kyle Larson rounds out the top five. Alex Bowman, Chase Briscoe, Brad Keselowski in his first LA Clash feature. Martin Truex, William Byron, the top 10, Ryan Priest, and Bubba Wallace all end up on the lead lap. What a night. Well, action was the attraction. 
Was this what you expected tonight? I honestly didn't really know what to expect, and I, I learned really quickly standing up here in the in the booth and in that TV compound that anything can happen, and it pretty much did. And I think as we got towards the end of the race, it started to get rougher, and Denny Hamlin just had a great restart and kept himself into the game and made it happen at the end. Heartbreak for Ty Gibbs, right? Yes. Had a fantastic race car, drove a good race. Did not get the outcome, but I think the kid's for real. I think this is going to – you're going to see a lot of him this year. I think you'll see him in victory lane for sure. And a, a huge thank you to NASCAR. This was an enormous pivot yeah. to take a race scheduled for Sunday, move it to Saturday, rush everything, make it all happen, Mexico race to follow uh, before the storms come in, and it's going to rain from Sunday to Wednesday, and we're going to either get out of town or build an arc. Well, it was, it was definitely the right decision, and, and I just – I'm with you. I want to thank everybody for making it happen because we saw a heck of a race and a great way to start the season. Denny Hamlin, how he loves to say, I beat your favorite driver again. And he does it in the Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum's third annual appearance. Folks, we'll see you in Daytona.